Hi there folks, welcome to Doc Talk. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson. I'm tickled to death that you joined us today for the show. We're going to talk about cattle handling and cattle facilities. And it's something that we do on a day in and day out basis in the beef industry. I hope it's a good show. I hope you enjoy it and I hope you learn something. And I always do whenever I'm out working at different facilities, working with different cattle and working with different people. Thanks for joining us today on Doc Talk and I'll see you right here after the break. Closed captioning brought to you by Kansas Soybean Commission. The Soybean Checkoff, progress, powered by Kansas farmers. Doc Talk, brought to you by Brown Chevrolet Buick. In Wamigo, just a short drive down the Yellow Brick Road. Hey there folks, welcome to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here from the College of Veterinary Medicine at Kansas State University, where I'm a professor. And I also direct the Beef Cattle Institute. And usually I have a guest, but every once in a while I fly solo here on the show. And today you're stuck with me. But I think we'll get along all right. Is we're going to talk about something that I have a big passion for, which is low stress cattle handling. And this is one of those things that I learned a lot from my dad. I learned a lot from my grandfather as working in their veterinary practices, worked from learning from different producers and cowboys and hands. There are also people that go around the country, Kurt Pate, Tom Knopfsinger, Temple Grandin, Kip Lucas Savage, Bud Williams, all are people who teach low stress cattle handling out there in the field. We also have people like John Mulhagen down at Silencer that are producing shoots. Danny Daniels up in Nebraska that has the Daniel system and, and, and Bud Box and, and Snake and Tub and, and all of the people working together with producers to continually improve low stress cattle handling. Now, animal rights groups use animal abuse incidents to drive animal welfare legislation. And a lot of times we try to mix these terms around and confuse people, but animal welfare is so different from animal rights. Animal rights is the belief that animals have the same rights as humans, and I just simply don't believe that. Animal abuse is something nobody wants to see happen to an animal. As a matter of fact, it's a crime. And number three, animal welfare, well, that's what we do every day. That's doing the chores, that's preventative medicine, that's providing nutrition, that's the human-animal interaction. And, and when we talk about animal welfare, the five guiding principles from the Food Animal Welfare Commission come from the, the five freedoms are freedom from thirst and hunger for our domestic animals, freedom from discomfort, which is our pen conditions and cattle comfort, freedom from pain, injury, and disease, and this is that veterinary client-patient relationship, the freedom to express normal behavior. Can they stand up, lie down? Can they uh, seek shade? Can they move around in the pen? Different things to that nature. And the last one is the freedom from fear and distress. And the freedom from fear and distress is really that human-animal interaction and so how do we interact with the animals and specifically how do we move them around. Now there are some new audits and assessments that have come out. The, the big ones that we're going to utilize that are kind of the gold standard of the industry are called the, the assessment tools from the Beef Quality Assurance Program and you can find those on the website at www.bqa.org and, and there is a cow-calf assessment, BQA assessment, there's a stalker BQA assessment tool, and there's a feedlot uh, BQA assessment tool. All the assessment tools incorporate things such as do you have best management practices for antibiotic residue avoidance, injection site uh, castration, dehorning, many of the painful procedures, are you being trained appropriately? They also ask things such as are you a plan for emergency action? if we have too big a snowfall or, or rainfall or heat stress, all these things that improve animal welfare. But the one thing they also include is a live animal handling section. And as we can go away to break and as we come back, we'll start to delve into the Beef Quality Assurance Assessment Tool and talk a little bit about the aspects that they have for beef cattle handling and some of the things that they're looking at that you can object, objectively score your beef cattle handling at your operation. We're going to take a break and more Doc Talk after this. 
This tip brought to you by Batril 100 Enrofloxacin Injectable. The only Enrofloxacin labeled for single-dose administration in cattle is also the only Enrofloxacin labeled for control of BRD in high-risk cattle. Batril 100, right the first time, whether it's controlling BRD in high-risk cattle or treating BRD. Hello, I'm Dr. Nels Lindberg with Animal Medical Center and Production Animal Consultation. Quick tip for the day is how often are you cleaning your water tanks? I'm a stickler for, for water tank cleanliness. Water drives consumption in cattle. Water also drives health. With inadequate consumption of water, we have decreased consumption and we're darn sure going to have decreased health. It's a must that we clean these tanks once a week all the way up to we have our round tanks, stock tanks, whatever it may be, stock tanks maybe not once a week, but we need to make very sure that those tanks are clean, free of algae, free of debris, free of feed and grass. We want to supply good, clean water. So go out today, check those water tanks, clean them, keep them as clean as you can. We want happy, healthy cows. Doc Talk, brought to you by Santa Fe Trail Meats in Overbrook, or visit us online at sftmeats.com. Hey folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here from Kansas State University. I got the K-State purple on and uh, very thankful for the opportunities that, that Kansas State University has given me and the opportunity that uh, Farming Unlimited and Doc Talk have given me to be able to spend time with y'all on these very important issues. At least they're important to me and I hope that they are to you as well. But uh, we're pretty lucky to be in the business of, of, of the beef business and when we start to look at this BQA feedlot assessment, and, and whether it's feedlot stock or a cow-calf, we're going to use the same type of objective measures to measure your cattle handling proficiency um, with, with any of the three. And it's how do you use driving aids like hot shots, and how often do you use them? Are cattle falling down upon release? Do cattle stumble or trip? Do the cattle vocalize prior to a procedure being done? So are they miscaught in the chute? And if they are miscaught in the chute, you have to readjust. And the big miscaught is if you catch them by the temples, we're gonna release, let their head come through and catch them appropriately. If you don't, if you don't release them and re-catch them, that's an automatic fail of the assessment. And the last one is, are the cattle running or jumping, exiting the chute? And everybody always asks, oh man, you mean cattle can't run exiting the chute? No, what I'm saying is, is they can lope out of the chute but we don't want to see over 25% of them with the tails up, sprinting out of the chute, somebody did something bad to me back here, so I'm trying to get away from it out here type of a deal. So the, the NCBA, the Beef Quality Assurance Assessment Tool, has what we call acceptable levels or tolerance levels for, for these types of activities. And, and I'll just go through these as no more than 10% of the cattle can be touched with an electric prod or a hot shot. Okay? No more than 2% of the animals can fall exiting the chute. And when I see cattle fall exiting the chute, generally they're coming out of the chute into a, onto a slick surface and we're asking them to make a quick right turn or left turn. And when they turn after two or three of them start to get a little bit of a sheen on the, on the ground, we'll get those cattle, their feet to come out from underneath them and they'll fall. So straight out exit is always good. And if it's not going to be a straight out exit, having sand, gravel, or some sort of base or rubber matting that allows those cattle to get a grip and move. No more than 25% can run. Again, that's tails up, sprinting out of the chute. And no more than 4% of the cattle can vocalize. Now, this is before we castrate or dehorn or ear tag. And most of the time when we have cattle vocalize in the chute, they've been miscaught. And what I mean by miscaught is that they're crooked in the chute. And if you'll just let off the sides, let them adjust and stand up, They'll quit vocalizing and they'll be fine. As we move through the facilities, and, and one of the things that people need to understand that moving cattle to the chute is about as important as the, the, will elicit the reaction of the cattle exiting the chute. But as cattle exit the chute, we can tell a lot about how they were handled prior to the chute. And what we're gonna do in the next segment is we're gonna go through a series of pictures looking at cattle and different things that you can do to help cattle flow through a facility to the squeeze chute, which will decrease your scores on the farm on when you do this BQA assessment as they're exiting the chute. You're watching Doc Talk. We're tickled to death that you joined us. We're going to be back after the break. Thank you. Buying a car shouldn't be this hard. And at Brown Chevrolet Buick in Wamego, it isn't. 
it's actually awesome. Whether you want a new or used car or truck, Toby's team can make the deal. Even if you want to custom order a new car or truck, Toby's team can make the deal. See Toby's team at Brown Chevrolet Buick in Wamigo. We're awesome. Turn to a Central National Bank Ag Professional. You'll be in good company. They'll help you track expense lines, manage variable input costs, assess ground agreements, pick a crop protection plan. These times demand Ag Professionals. Central National Bank. You could profit from what they know. Ag operations run better on Central Time. Central National Bank. Money for life. Member FDIC in your hometown since 1884. This Meet the Veterinarian is brought to you by Merck Animal Health, the science of healthier animals. Dr. Laird Lawrence is the founder and owner of Hill Country Veterinary Clinic, a mixed practice located in Fredericksburg, Texas. Dr. Lawrence is a graduate of Texas A&M University and has served as technical services manager of U.S. cattle and small ruminants for Merck Animal Health since January 2013. The Kansas Wheat Innovation Center in Manhattan is rediscovering ways to get improved varieties and new genetics in the hands of farmers faster. Grower-led and checkoff-funded research initiatives are bringing about positive change. This grassroots leadership provides a strong voice in Topeka and Washington, D.C. Now is the time to partner with Kansas Wheat in moving wheat forward. Kansas Wheat Commission and Kansas Association of Wheat Growers, farmers investing in their future and yours. Log on to rediscoverwheat.org. Hey there folks, Dr. Dan from K-State. Are you BQA certified? Well, if you're involved with the beef industry and you're not BQA certified, you should be. And today, you can do it free online from the comfort of your computer or mobile device. Go to the website listed below, bivi-bqa.com. Sponsored by Beringer Engelheim Vet Medica and the Beef Quality Assurance Program at the National Cattlemen's Beef Association. Today through October 31st is your time to get BQA certified. This is the fast track to more jobs and America's energy independence. Advanced performance is here now. Biodiesel, America's advanced biofuel. Doc Talk, brought to you by the Kansas Soybean Commission. The Soybean Checkoff, progress powered by Kansas farmers. Hey folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. We're talking about the Beef Quality Assurance Assessment Tool, and we've talked about some of the parameters that we're going to measure when we judge low stress cattle handling. Now I want to talk about a few things that can help you flow cattle through the, the chute a little bit better. One of the behaviors that cattle elicit or exhibit is they prefer to move from areas of dark to light, not light to dark. And so one of the trouble areas of moving cattle into a facility is when we go from the outside to the inside of a building. And things that you can do to transfer and prevent shade or areas on the ground to not spook cattle or balk them to have them come back on top of you are always good to do. Now, cattle aren't afraid of shade, but when they're worried about you or somebody else moving them around and they catch shade or a a change in light outside, it can cause cattle to balk and it's something that you need to pay attention to as we can see in this, this picture. The inside of a working facility, as explained to me by Dr. Temple Grandin, should be lit similar to what the outside looks like on a cloudy day. So as we can take a look at this picture here in this slide, we do some things such as putting these vinyl panels and different types of see-through panels into the ceilings and into the walls and we try to bring in some natural light into these working facilities or into clinics. Just makes it a more enjoyable place to work. It makes it an easier transition from outside to inside for cattle and it doesn't hurt too bad as a person to either to be in there with a little bit more of natural light and, and natural environment. One thing that makes cattle very anxious is, is not having very good footing and you will increase the stress rate and decrease the ability of cattle to move uh, effectively in a system if we don't have proper footing. Whether it's a tub or whether it's an alleyway, when cattle are on ice or on slick surfaces, 
they really have heightened awareness and they, they are more difficult to move and they're more anxious. So one of the things that we look at, and I will inspect whether it's in the lead up alley or whether it's in the, the tub or whether it's in the snake or whether it's the alley exiting the chute, I'm always looking for ways to make sure that we have traction on the floor, whether it's grooves in the concrete, and generally we do inch and a half by inch and a half grooves in eight inch diamonds on floors, as you can see in, in this picture, or we're gonna use rubber matting or we may use something like dirt or gravel if it's an outdoor facility. All of these can be adequate for, for footing on the cattle, but when we have just bare concrete that starts to get some manure or urine on it or water or ice, it can be, be cause some trouble with cattle movement. When cattle come into a working tub, two of the bigger issues that we see, one is the tub needs to be the same width as the alley that's coming to the tub. If we have an, a 12 foot alley, we need to have a 12 foot entrance to the tub. If we have a 10 foot wide alley, we need to have a 10 foot. When we start to taper that towards the, the entrance to the tub is when we'll have trouble with cattle coming to a point, turning around and balking on us. The other one is the angle in which the cattle enter the tub. And, and basically, as you can see from this picture that was drawn by Temple Grandin, if the cattle are coming in from a point where they are almost returning from the direction in which they came, they don't turn around and for human safety when you're grabbing that gate the only thing that you're seeing is, is the tails of the cattle. If the tub comes straight into a, to a bottleneck you'll have those cattle turn around, you'll have cam cattle coming back on top of you and that can be a huge danger issue. When we come back we're going to talk a little bit about the bud box and moving cattle through the snake. We appreciate you watching Doc Talk. Thanks for joining us. Now another gardening tip with Annette Jackson. Now is the time to overseed your lawn. The success of your lawn depends on the quality you plant and the proper fertilizer. Plant 100% weed-free seed with top-rated varieties tested by KSU. Always use Fertilome New Lawn Starter for faster, stronger root development. Don't waste time and money with lower quality seed from the box stores. Join the Jackson's Greenhouse WIBW Garden Club and save 10% on your lawn seed and Fertilome new lawn starter. Tallgrass Commodities offers producers bulk commodities at a reasonable price with reliable service throughout the whole Midwest. To find out more about Tallgrass Commodities, visit tallgrass.us or call 785-494-8484. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. Valley Vet Supply. Tar Waters has what you need for all seasons for around the farm and home. Working, hunting, growing, feeding, snow removal, even fun for the kids. And a service department with experienced techs to help keep your equipment in top running condition. Tarwaters has a huge selection and the best prices. Tarwater Farm and Home, family owned and operated since 1978. They have what you need. This hog is Hanover Hoof for meal made from U.S. soybeans. Now, one hog isn't that impressive, but suppose we add another, and another, and another. Before long, you've got billions of hungry customers around the world all clamoring for the same thing our soybeans. Learn more about the billion dollar appetite of animal agriculture at beyondtheelevator.com. Brought to you by America's Soybean Farmers and their checkoff. The BQA Tip of the Day, sponsored by Beringer Engelheim Vet Medica Inc. Hello, I'm Dr. Nels Lindbergh with Animal Medical Center and Production Animal Consultation. Today on our quick tip of the day, we want to talk about withdrawal times. I've got a question for you. I'm curious if you're following your withdrawal times or if you've ever had FDA come visit you because you've had a residue pop up or they're looking for a residue. What happens when FDA shows up is they've had a residue pop up at the packing plant and from there they just work their way down the line trying to find out where that drug was given and who didn't obey the law and obey the withdrawal. So it's vitally important as a producer that you keep very accurate records, handwritten records or computerized records so that every drug you give, you have the withdrawal established. Please don't send animals to the next producer or sale barn without making sure that they are off withdrawal.
Hello friends, I'm Ernie Rodina. And I'm Don Dawson with the Better Horses Radio Show. For over nine years, we've been bringing the Better Horses Radio Show to markets all across the Midwest. We talk about God, lots about horses. We talk about cows, we talk about horse health, we talk to top trainers, and we even talk about Roy Rogers. We're having a blast with Better Horses Radio Show and would love to take it to a market near you. So visit our website at betterhorsesradio.com and let us or your local radio station know you'd like to hear it in your area. The Better Horses Radio Show is unbelievable. Soil is the life of a farm, and for 25 years, SureCrop Liquid Crop Nutrition has helped growers produce abundant quality crops while preserving and improving the soils they steward. SureCrop offers complete soil and plant analysis with cropping recommendations, delivery direct to your on-farm storage, and quality crop nutrition custom blended for your field. Choose SureCrop for the assurance of excellence for your soil. Call today or visit their website for more information. Doc Talk, brought to you by the Kansas Association of Wheat Growers and the Kansas Wheat Commission. Together, we are Kansas Wheat. Hey folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here from Kansas State University's College of Veterinary Medicine. We just talked about tubs, and there's another uh, way of crowding cattle or moving cattle into the snake at the point of the shoot when we're working them, and that's called a bud box. And here's a diagram of a bud box, and you can see that this is basically a bud box if you're using panels. It's two panels long, one panel wide, two panels long, and then you have a catch panel here in the middle. But it's just an extension of the alley, and these are open-sided fences and, and gates if you're going to use them. And what we do is we'll bring the cattle into the bud box. Rule number one, you can never bring more cattle into the bud box than what you can fit in your snake. And this has been taught to me by Dr. Tom Knopfsinger, so I can't really take credit from this, but I'm going to pass it on to you all from him. So as the cattle come into the, the bud box, we're going to catch this gate and shut it right here at the point of the snake. Okay? And we catch this gate, and then we're going to park ourselves or our horse right here where this blue dot is. From that point forward, we're going to move towards the cattle, and the cattle will come out of this end, and they will come around the person or the horse, and they will go right into the, the snake. And I have an example here of utilizing this bud box and you can see that they're bringing the cattle here into the bud box. This over here is the Daniels uh, alley that goes straight away from this bud box. They shut the gate that comes even with the, the snake that they're wanting to bring. They move towards the cattle and as they step towards the cattle, the cattle go right around them and they go right down the, the alley. So tub or bud box uh, both of them are very effective and can be utilized. There's a debate on which one you want to use, but I can tell you that both are adequate facilities and things that you can utilize to, to move cattle through. Okay, when we get to the point in time of the snake, one thing that we have to understand is the path in which we are going to move those cattle. And the way that you move cattle forward within the snake is shown here and depicted. You want to move against the flow of the cattle, and as you pass the point of, of the eye or the point of the shoulder, either one, as you move past the eye and the shoulder, these cattle are going to move forward. And if you want to slow the cattle down, you move with them. If you want to speed the cattle up, you move against the flow of the cattle in the direction that you want to go. Some of the things that we've utilized uh, also to move cattle, some of these hydraulic chutes set off the ground. We've used expanded metal to build a ramp up into the chute. And, and things that we can do to improve traction, improve mobility of going up into the chute. When the cattle exit the chute, this is a good example of some rubber matting that you can place uh, on the exit portion of the chute. Uh, these are found in, in many of your, your uh, beef magazines and you can look in ads and find people that are making these woven tire mats and they're ex extremely uh, good. Just because we use hot shots doesn't mean that we, we can use sorting sticks to crack cattle on the backs. And this is an example of cattle that have linear bruising from our uh, using sorting sticks. So good animal handling is important. So we're going to do more on cattle handling as we move forward with Doc Talk in the series. And I'll bring in some guests and show more facility pictures than that. Remember to always work with a veterinarian. If you want to know what we do here at Doc Talk, you can find us on the web at www.doctalktv.com. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson. Thanks for joining me today on Doc Talk. It's been my pleasure to spend the morning with you, and I'll see you down the road. 
closed captioning brought to you by Kansas Soybean Commission. The Soybean Checkoff, progress, powered by Kansas farmers.